I'm Casey with Baby Froche and today I'm going to teach you how to do a faux stain technique. This is one of my favorite techniques to do because it is so easy and way better than traditional stain. I'm going to show you how and why next. In the meantime, be sure to like and subscribe to our channel. It means the world to us and you can stay tuned and stay updated on our new video tutorial releases. The reason I chose to sand the top of this table is because it was in pretty rough shape as you can see here. You can also do this technique when there is appearance of a grain. I like to do it when I have an actual grain, that's why I chose to sand the top of this table. So anytime there is the appearance of a grain or an actual grain. Now I did not sand the whole entire table as you notice because BB Froche Paint Transformer when added to paint will just bond to any surface. The reason that I am able to do this technique so easily is because I've added BB Froche Paint Transformer to my paint. So you can see here, I'm sanding the top, but not the bottom. If you stay tuned, you can see how beautifully this technique will work. I'm ready to start this table. I have already sanded the top of it. Now the reason that I sanded the top was so that I can do the faux stain technique. So right now all I'm going to do is clean it and I'm going to clean the whole entire piece to get rid of any dust, debris, or gunk that might be on it. I'm just going to take a normal household cleaner and a paper towel and get, and get to cleaning. paint into chalk paint. You'll see that I just have a 50 cent oops paint from the local hardware store and this I really like this color so this is what I'm going to be doing for the faux stain on the top and paint the base solid. So to make up my chalk paint I'm going to add two tablespoons of water to my mixing jar. Two tablespoons of powder excuse me. So I'm going to do two tablespoons of powder to about one and a half tablespoons of water. And you're just really after a donut glaze consistency here. So just make sure all your powder and water is mixed up nicely. This is about eight ounces of paint that I'm going to be making up and this will be plenty for this table project that I'm doing. So I'm just going to add my paint right to my jar. The reason that I mix in these jars is so that one, I can see that it's mixed in the chalk paint. Two, if it's in this jar already, I know it's mixed up. Whoops, I'll wipe that right there. Okay, let's check this out. And all you're gonna do is shake it up and once the white is gone, you'll know it's made into chalk paint. Okay, you can see I started painting the base of this and a couple of things that I wanna talk about. I did not have to sand, prime, or strip any of this base because I added BB Froche Paint Transformer to my paint to help with the bonding. So I also like to paint directly from a paint tray. That will help me waste a lot less paint so that I'm not dipping my paintbrush directly into my jar of paint. I'm just getting a little bit on here. Other things that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna paint in crosshatch strokes on the base of this table. That will help ensure self-leveling and a really smooth, beautiful finish. So the crosshatch strokes are just kind of like this in random directions. You can always paint with the grain if you'd like to on your final coat. So whether that's your second or third coat, but this first coat, you really want it to be in crosshatch strokes. A couple of tips that I have here too, turn your piece upside down, paint from higher, paint from lower to really make sure that you get all of the edges and all of those grooves. 
Lastly, I am using a small paintbrush. You can really use any size for this project, but as a rule of thumb, you wanna use the size paintbrush for the size project. So the reason that I like a small one right here is because I can get into these grooves really easily. Now, up here on the tabletop, I might use a larger size brush, um, but right here I'm gonna use this small brush, so I'm ready to show you how I finish off this base. Dip my paint brush right into my paint and continue with those crosshatch strokes. You also really want your first coat to be super thin. This is your bonding coat. So this is what will help your paint really stick to that piece. Do not overwork your paint. Basically, just get some paint on there and you will see this second coat will have excellent coverage. For the faux stain part, I am going to have my paint on hand, and this color is a Benjamin Moore color. It's called Mink. I really love love this one to get a true stain color, but you can actually do this with any color you want. Today I'm demoing the brown, but you can do it in red, blue, green, whatever you want. I'm also gonna have my small brush, um, a paint tray, some water, and a lint-free huck towel. So I'm going to pour my paint directly onto my paint tray like this and then dip my water in my brush. That's how I'm going to water down my paint for this technique rather than pour my water directly onto here. This way I can control the amount of water and the amount of paint that I'm using. Okay, I'm gonna start at one end so I have pretty watery paint. I'm going to start at one end and go all the way across to the other end of the grain. Okay, now I'm feeling like this is not watery enough, so I'm going to add a little bit more water. Immediately wipe off to be able to see the grain. So this is really cool because you get to play with it however you'd like. So I'm going to add a little bit more water. You can also add a little bit more paint if you'd like to. So I'm going to go back and forth. Wipe off immediately like I said, to be able to see the grain. And get some more water on here. This is not runny enough for me. I like to be able to see a lot of the grain, but this is something that you can play with and you're able to still really easily work it while it's wet. So make sure your paint is pretty wet so that you can get the look that you're after. And be sure to wipe right away. So go one end all the way to the other and just make sure that you wipe right away to get off the extra. It will dry even a little bit lighter than this since this is still wet. You wanna make sure I didn't do an excellent job, but really get those edges too. Perfect, this is looking really great. You can also, when you're all the way done, I'm gonna be dark waxing this to really enrich this color. We can kind of play with it and do whatever color wax you'd like. You can also, if you want it to be kind of two-tone, want it to look a little different, you can go lighter in the middle, darker on the edges. That's just a matter of more paint, less paint, more water, less water. I'll wipe off the excess right away. The reason that I'm using this blue towel is this is a lint-free hot towel. So this ensures that no lint gets into my piece and ruins my beautiful work.
This is just paint right here. I may come back, well, I'm definitely gonna come back and do dark wax on this, but I, as I'm looking at it, I really like it. I may stick to clear. That's just personal preference, what you're after. You can play around with both. Some of these little spots that I got right here, I'm really not worried about. You can tape that off, but I may, I'm, I'm just gonna come back with this color and just touch up that spot right there. But I will You do clear wax on the bottom half and then dark wax up here and I will show you how to do that in just a second. The paint has fully dried and cured. Now I'm going to dark wax this. And I really, I chose dark wax because it will really bring out the beautiful tones of this brown. So I'm using premium BB Froche Premium Finishing Dark Wax and my large wax brush. You're just gonna butter the end of your brush like this. And similar to the way we did the faux stain technique, you're gonna start on one end and go all the way to the other. Then I'm going to use a wax cloth to remove any excess wax right away. So you kind of think here, wax on, wax off. You can see just how beautiful this looks right away. So I'm gonna wax on and get the excess off. And then if the shinier that I want this to become, the more that I will buff, then the less I buff, the less shiny it will be. So I'm gonna do a couple more here so you can really start to see just how beautiful this looks. Mm -hmm. 